Hey, welcome back to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. First of all, I am Lionel. I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And, and I am Robert, have... and I am just outside Nashville, Tennessee, in the good old U.S. of A. And before we start talking like last week about who's got the hotter weather, and we know it's Robert, not us. He's been <laughs> cold here. It's going to get hot, though. However, that said, uh, we hope you are really going to keep enjoying the content we're delivering to you here podcast, but we got some much better stuff coming up too. Uh, in addition to our regular discussions, we got a very special guest coming up. I'll let Rod give you a little bit more insight into that. Uh, but beyond that, the first week of July coming up pretty quick and everybody in North America, well, Canada, United States anyways, knows all about that. Uh, so we're going to have some very special episodes for you to watch. Uh, starting from July 1st through July 4th, we're probably going to have at least three, if not four episodes that we're going to do. And we're going to hopefully have some guests on. If we don't have any guests on, we'll have some special content for you. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be fun. Robert. And, and what do we call it? Can it, can appendance day? Can, can, can dependence day. Can I know dependence. Can, Canada dependence <laughs> might sound like it makes more sense, but can dependence goes right into it. So since we're both celebrating, since our yeah. independence yeah. celebrations, because remember, Canada may not be technically selling, celebrating independence from Britain, but that's kind of what it is. We were a commonwealth, we technically still are. But uh, since 19, since 19, uh, I, I, my God, this is embarrassing. I don't remember, 80 or 81. <laughs> I just got to look that up now. I'm going to get a lot of flack off this, man. Um, uh, we, we, we have not had to rely on the British crown to approve of any laws we want to add, change, or amend, or whatever. So Canada is fully independent in that yeah. respect. Now we are our own country. Uh, and unbe unbeknownst to a lot of people, we technically weren't until that point. But there were other milestones that made us more and more independent along the way, including 1965 when we finally got our own flag. Yeah, it took that long. So the Maple Leaf is not a hundred and whatever years old. I didn't it, realize that about the flag. It's 59 years old. It's a flag that last month. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you know, Ian, we can get into more facts like that. By the way, that that very same day, uh, Cassius Clay, a.k.a. would become Muhammad Ali, uh, had his second fight against Sonny Liston, where he was now defending his uh, world title. And, of course, obviously, you know, he won. And I'll just I'll just say uh, this is how old I am. That was the day I was born. <laughs> so uh, there's that. <laughs> the flag wasn't the same day. It was the same year. Uh, anyways, right. So you, <laughs> Robert, you can talk, talk more about. We got a, we do have a, a guest coming up. It'll be our first guest on the show, and I'm actually really excited about it. Uh, so what do you, what, uh, anything more you want to tell us about it? Yeah. So, um, it's going to be kind of cool. Um, my youngest son is going to be in town from, he lives in Texas right now. Um, he moved there after he got out of the military and he is a, uh, quite the world traveler right. and he's got a, a lot of cool knowledge and he's just a cool dude all around. So I'm really excited to have him on. He's pretty, he's pretty jazzed about it. So, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. So we'll come up with some good topics and, content yeah I, I look i look forward to that i do i do i do i haven't spoken to him obviously in a long time because he was the one we played uh that one game with a couple of years back a few years ago now actually i think it's a game I, it, it was well no no we played more than once the game but okay. i mean it was only one game that we that, that right. we played as a group with right. him uh and uh and i think it was uh his other friend right uh, if no. I'm not mistaken, it wasn't. Oh, no, no was you're, your thinking, you're thinking of Anthony that my uh, no, 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 Anthony wasn't the one that played that game with us. You told me that last. No, time. but Anthony had the other friend. No, no, I'm not talking. We Blake's had never we, had another we friend. Played, play we played, we played well, Keith, then it was your friend because we had four people that were playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're talking, yeah, 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 you're talking about um, Ryan LePage, I think is how you pronounce his name. He actually lives in Canada, he lives in Vancouver. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, oh, okay. And, and yet I was getting all He's the like Google Plus Canadian. Oh, yeah. Well, that was the tail end of Google Plus, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> we, were, 
we were we were playing that in the in the in the last you know dying days of of stadia which we won't get into today uh what do we want to start with robert today well um i think we should take a look at this uh article i sent you about apple um because you know everyone when ai came out Everybody was like, well, Apple doesn't have AI. Apple doesn't have AI. Well, we all know how Apple works. You know, they they, right. they beat to their own drum. Um, no, they marched to the beat of their own drum. <laughs> and they, they kind of do their own thing. They have their own little walled garden, which, you know, everybody gets irritated yeah. about. And, you know. Is this the one, is this the one that, uh, that came from the article with the iOS 18? Is that a different thing? Because I'm I don't Forbes. It's a Forbes article, and it talks about um how they are going to be coming out with it, and it's going to be all on device processed. Like there's not going to be any. What well, maybe? Oh maybe, yes, right, right. Yeah, it's going to be um, on device, and whereas like Samsung has like a hybrid, like they have some things on device and they have some things cloud and then Google is all cloud. So, you know, I don't, well, maybe on the pixel, I don't, does the pixel do on device? Uh, technically, but I have a feeling that there's a couple of things they still have to sort of turn on to do on device. Uh, they have what's, what's the, the nano. Um, yeah. Which is the on device. And it's only at this point for the pixel. Well, uh, sorry, as of this, uh, feature drop the Pixel Eight, I believe. Also, um, however, it, it's really only doing a couple of things. Uh, there's a few things they haven't opened up to it yet. I think they're actually kind of concerned that they don't have the strongest chip for it, and it's the same reason that uh, they're talking about that with Apple. Is most of their phones are not going to get it because they have to have a certain level of chip. Uh, most of Samsung's devices don't have full on device anything for right. the same reason next year is going to be different for everyone's devices and apple's acting like they're moving ahead of it sorry apple but you are when it's it's very obvious that everyone that jumped ahead of you a long time ago is obviously moving in that direction google theoretically in android uh which version of it is now? <laughs> what are we at? Well, Not, it's uh, 14 now, coming up 15. Well, okay, wait, 15, yeah. So, no, it would, it would actually be 16 then because it would be the Pixel 10. It's going to be their own chip, and it's 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 basically made by the same company that's making everybody else's chips, including Apple's. So, theoretically, they could be just as powerful or not as powerful, but much more efficient working with their hardware, so on and so on. And yeah. also, Google does have their other chip, or... or my, uh, Sorry, not chip. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I can't remember the right word for it. Uh, it's like a secondary chip, the, the, the coprocessor oh. that <laughs> that that they use for uh, AI work, right? Uh, and, it, and that's going to be in house. Well, it already is. So they're just going to make it better. And it's probably that one's probably going to be made by the same company as well. So um, this is what's going to be good for it is is that they'll be able to do a lot more on device but for ai to really do its best work you can't rely on just on device on something in your hand it, the amount of power it's going to require in memory people are thinking like i can do everything and multitask while i've got ai doing something that normally would take six apps to do and 20 minutes of research and i wanted to do it in 12 seconds well we're getting there but right now, you you need to use the cloud. And so this article you're talking about, I'm kind of baffled at how the way it's written, I, it's I almost clickbaity, and you have to admit that because it, makes it, it is. Like, oh, it yeah, is because just, like Samsung's doing it wrong. When the Samsung's doing it right, they're putting on device what it can handle, and they're making sure you know that everything else is going to the cloud. Now, is it? Is it, uh, this is the thing that Apple's saying, though, that their cloud AI stuff is going to be end-to-end -end encrypted. Here's what I'm saying. By this time next year, we'll be talking about how Samsung and Google will be going to full end-to-end -end encryption 
with your yeah. AI requests. Now that's only going to be AI requests for stuff to do that has to go to the cloud. That's not going to be the same thing as saying, can you draw me a picture of something? Because right. it may or may not be right. Uh, because it's using a third party application right. technically in order to make that. And that stuff is never going to be done on device. And you're crazy if you want AI to make on device pictures for you because the amount of data it has to use just to even figure it out not data guys and i mean basically processing the, power. the processing power that it has to use right well it, it, that's why it is a little deceiving because and that's what i was bringing this up is that they call it private cloud compute Right, yeah. Because of the end-to-end -end encryption thing, making it sound like it's your own little thing, and you know, and it's all device-based. But again, it's still, um, in the cloud. <laughs> There's still data in the cloud. <laughs> so yeah, I you know, I I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, anybody watching would notice that I was doing the whole Max Headroom thing just now, and I think I figured it out. That that. I'm not, don't ever ask me to open up Forbes while doing a, a live stream. The amount of advertisements that are on there, <laughs> yeah. I thought for a second that I could hear, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, it's like I was connecting via dial up again, you know? Yeah. You the one thing this guy it. says at the end of the article, which is something I completely agree with, is. The question is, whose data center do you trust, especially for those Samsung users considering a thousand dollar purchase plus purchase of new AI centric smartphones? It's really about like who 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 do you want? Who's in your corner? Who do you want to be in your corner, or do you want to be in their corner? I don't know how you want to put it, but you know, I I think they all probably have their level of vulnerability to some degree. Of course. Yeah. I think that across the board, Google, Samsung, Apple, Microsoft, I think all the big players are truly putting in best effort to make sure everything is secured to the best of their knowledge with what they have right now. This is all new territory, not only for us as consumers, but for them as manufacturers and developers and designers and everything else. This is all new territory. So they're kind of developing in some respect as they go, learn as you burn, so to speak. Um, and that's fine. I think they're doing their due diligence to the best of their ability to make sure things are as protected as they can be. And so, you know, it's just a matter of like, I'm embedded in the Google ecosystem. I know you're embedded in the Google ecosystem. Neither one of us are going to move to Apple. I don't care what Apple has. I'm not moving to Apple ecosystem. <laughs> Yeah, and no, it's, it's going to be the other way around too. So, you know, if I needed to be more secure, to be honest with you, there are other methods, even in Android, to be more secure. Yes. First, first of all, you could turn off a bunch of tracking and all kinds of stuff like that. It's entirely possible and it's been done on the internet, but we've seen it on YouTube videos and, and articles for years where guys have taken a Samsung phone, a Pixel phone, usually mostly Pixels or, or OnePlus phones, obviously, a little easier to work with uh and 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 transform them into ridiculously secure phones they can still surf the internet they can still go to their bank well you know you say that. banks where they can sign in you can't do that in, at all on a, in a modern bank you won't be able to sign in with an app or with their website at all if you have so much security it's not going to work and they say well you I mean because it's still a signing process yeah but now in with all of them you have to have your uh uh two-factor authentication uh right. and you know various other forms and well, then there's look, government, the government sign-ins are even more ridiculous but look you know obviously i work in it and yeah in security and my uh, the the owner of the company i work for you know he's a very high level conscious security person and i don't know a year or two ago he got himself a um, actually, I sold him one of my old Pixel phones. He took it, he rooted it, and he put on yeah. some custom. You can't do anything ROM that was super secure, which is fine, you know. Yeah. But 
that's the shit he couldn't do because it's that's so long exactly, now. And, yeah, and that's yeah. fine if that's what you want, but don't don't expect to be able to get good directions or yeah, no. Google a restaurant <laughs> or nothing. You can't do anything except use it for well, a you realize <laughs> you realize we would not be able to even have this channel if no. we were using those devices right. and had laptops hooked up like that uh, right. behind you know six hardware firewalls <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was crazy it was crazy i'm just like yeah that's you know it's it's a trade off oh, look it's a trade off you know yeah. convenience for security security yeah. for convenience and there is a middle ground and uh, you know i think okay. you know with on device encryption and you know there's certain like for example if you try to get my phone too many times it it'll blow itself up and completely wipe itself i mean there are things you could put in place to help protect yourself make sure you run two factor on all your accounts uh, i even have um a key like you know the titan key from google yeah 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 and i was i did a security um not conference i went to one of our clients and did like an hour long security um talk and we were talking about you know, two factor and the different types of ways you can do that. And I pulled out my key and I said, I even have hardware two factor. And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, yeah, I can't wait. I wait, have to put, wait, wait, who said what's that? The people in the room, they didn't, they'd never seen a hardware security key. Really? And I that's said, I plug it in my USB and I have to use my fingerprint on my USB key in order to authenticate. And then it signs me right into my account. No, no, wait a minute. Uh, modern hardware authentication is hugely advanced over what it would have been when it sure, first. Sure, but people don't up. know. But, people don't but, use it. But, but but hasn't that been around? Like, I mean, back in the days of USB one point something, you could get those. I mean, they they were garbage because if something ever happened, you really didn't have any other out whatsoever. Uh, now you can actually get a backup for a backup that you know, but right. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm not wrong about that, right? I mean, didn't people use it? I mean, I swear somebody tried to sell me one when I had Windows XP when it was fresh. Am oh I yeah, wrong? it's been around Am for I a long time, but, but people don't know about it. People don't use it, and because it's not widely, you know. But what about within within business? Or, like I mean, like like you know, it businesses where sensitive data is a huge thing, and they well, tend to carry the laptops. Around. Maybe if it were a advertising, bank, advertising. Well, maybe but you know, maybe, but maybe, medical. But, but I don't think I don't think there's a lot of bank laptops that are supposed to be outside the business with personal uh, customers. Well, no, data but I mean, um, the medical field has been using them for a long time. They have our medical RCAs field, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So those people would know what it was, but this is an engineering firm, yeah. and they, you know, so they, they didn't know one of my oh, very really? first For questions. Wow. Okay. I started out my, my, my conversation by asking a question. I said, yeah. how many people this morning left their house and didn't lock your doors, didn't close your windows. You just left and just left it just where anybody could walk in your house. Dang. I'd say a fourth of the room raised their hand. Oh, you're kidding. Because they lived out in the country. And I'm like, okay, well, before we leave, can I get your address? <laughs> 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 but they all laughed and said, well, yeah, just try to get in my house. I'm like, you know, you know, I look, I said, look, I lock my car in my driveway. I live in a nice neighborhood, yeah, but I lock yeah. my car in my I could I could live in a gated community. Hey, I dude, live, I, I drive I, a, my car I my drive a Hyundai Elantra and I lock my doors. Mine's a Ford Fusion. Nobody's <laughs> Nobody steals a Hyundai Elantra. They steal Fusions more than they steal Elantras. Not a hybrid, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, they, but they could still steal the contents. They could just, you know, whatever. But yeah, no, yeah. lock stuff up, right? Yeah. I mean, in, in all honesty, just, just this, this, this is how simple this is because yeah. this is how good it is now. Phones locked. Yeah. So I said if to him, you I said, set it up. That's all you have to do. Right? I said, same for, thing for those of you who locked your house and those of you who didn't just think about this, yeah. your digital information is your digital house. Why do you not want to secure it? So people can't get in it. 
secure it to the yeah. best of your ability, period. I mean, it's not going to be 100%. There's no 100% foolproof way of securing no, anything. No, but make it make it hard enough that it's make not. Make it as hard you as know. you can. And, and especially if you're talking about, you know, uh, phones and laptops specifically. Yes. Uh, for, that, for that very reason, because chances are they can only try so much to try to steal your stuff before you or someone else comes along and goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I mean, you forget your phone on the table when you go into Dunkin' Donuts, Timmy's in Canada. <laughs> then you, uh, you know, uh, somebody's like, "Oh, well, I'm not going to steal it, but maybe I can try to get into this guy's bank account real quick and send myself for money." How? Even if the guy's too stupid to put a lock screen on his phone, you yeah. know, how are you going to get into the bank app? Two-factor authentication. If you're using a bank that doesn't have two-factor authentication in their app, change banks. Change banks. Oh, but they offer me 0.5% more. No, it's not even 0.5. 0.05% interest more in my savings account. Yeah. 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 So for after $100,000, you get another 10 bucks. Well, the, the, I, I tell him, I was like, look, security is inconvenient. There's no doubt about it. And I said, as a security professional, an IT professional, it's inconvenient to me. But I know the ramifications <laughs> of not doing it. Okay. I was like, right. look, I can only tell you this. Use two-factor, 100%. Use a good app. Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, Duo Authenticator. I mean, there's a ton of good authenticating apps that store yes. this information locally. It's not a cloud-based information. It's local information, right? right? But make sure if you switch phones, <laughs> you transfer those keys before you switch phones. Otherwise, you'll be sending your driver's license to have your yeah. company. And, and the thing, another thing that should be mentioned too is when you, when you actually do that, uh, once you've verified and only after that everything's working on your new phone, you can actually wipe those keys and redo them again so they're not the same, which they wouldn't be anyways. That's another story. You can explain yeah, it's just a lot. Token, right. We don't need to go into it. But yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, it's, by the way, the same reason I tell people, if you have an option to tap your phone or watch, mm -hmm. Uh, as opposed to tapping your card, certainly as opposed to using the chip and pin, and definitely if you don't have to swipe, yeah, then tap your phone. And the reason why is because, again, we're talking about tokens. It's a security thing. Neither the place you're paying, uh, the place that processes the payment, nor you, nor Google or Apple or Samsung has any clue what your credit card is because when you put it in locally, it assigns that to it and it tells wherever you're trying to pay that this is legit and you can take the money and gives them a fake number. And, and when I say blows fake up number, it's not technically fake. What's that? And, then, and that number is destroyed as soon as you're done. It's no longer valid. Right, exactly. Right. So so it can't they can't even go in and say, Oh, I can do this again because it, it can only be attached to one purchase, regardless of whether you know where it is, that that's it. And so uh, you tap your phone, tap your watch, most secure thing in the world. Uh, and, somebody and asked somebody me that there. They said, oh, yeah. you know, um, somebody told me that I should, you know, tap my credit card instead of, you know, use that little pin thing or swiping it. I said, 100%. I said, if you use your, and I said the same thing, if you use your phone, use your phone. Is that more secure? I said, 150% more secure. I mean, it's, there's no, I said, I said, look, COVID was a bad thing. It like wrecked a lot of businesses and people and, and it was a, a really kind of bad time in the world. Okay. But yeah. out of everything bad comes a good. And the one good thing that came out of that, not just one, but this good thing is tap and pay became like the way to pay. It was like right, the right. primary method now, instead of a second thought, where companies are like, oh, uh, it's too expensive to implement, or blah blah blah. It is a darn shame, by the way. If you wanted any money, you had to tap and pay; otherwise, you weren't getting any money. So, you know, yeah, it, it's a really, a it's really a darn shame that it took something like COVID to to get yeah. uh, the uh, the majority of America to go. Yep, tap is the right thing to do. I mean, it took you way longer to do chip and pin than than most of the rest of the free world in yeah. the first place. And I I have 
I as a matter of fact, the you know, first time we ever started talking way back in the Google Plus days, I believe even you were saying that chip and pin was new to most places there if they had it at all. And that's oh, yeah, going I, back I years. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I if I remember Alex, uh, Alex Hernandez, um, you remember him, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I talked to him quite a bit. He 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 hadn't even used it yet. Yeah, so yeah. I, at that time i'm sure he's probably a lot now right um uh, but yeah no it, it but here chip and pin was already in most places there were very few that didn't have it tap was starting to catch on but within two years tap right yeah. through the roof there is nothing you can't tap i went to i swear the, the, no word of a lie i uh, i was driving down a rural road uh, and, and there was a sign that said butter tarts. Uh, you, I know you're not Canadian. Just think of it as a mini pie. <laughs> Anyways, they're fantastic. Uh, so I, uh, it's just a little shack on the side of the little dirt road. You pull off the road a little bit and you go in there and I'm like, okay, I, I suppose I have to have cash, right? I don't carry cash, right? But I really needed to at least inquire. And he says, no, you don't have to have cash. He said, we, we don't have this activated yet for the tap right now, but but you can send us the money via e-transfer, which is basically uh, in Canada we have e-transfers and all of the major banks and many of the credit unions and some smaller banks uh, have all joined us, so hundreds of banks, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just all part of this uh, electronic transfer system. It's like Zelle here in the States. Uh, yeah, except that this is far more attached. It, it, it's like you do this directly from your bank, from your banking app, from wherever. Uh, and and more recently, uh, some credit cards are now allowing you to actually request from your bank to transfer for your payment for your credit cards. And that's actually how I do that. So rather than having to go to the bank, you know, or pay it from my bank app and then waiting two or three days for it to finally show up on the credit card, it's anywhere from instant to a couple of hours. Uh, and you can send money to each to people, and it used to be you had to do, you know, the you'd have to put it in, and then there'd have to be a question and a correct answer from the person receiving the money, mm, right, yeah. to, to make sure for security. But then they started putting it that when they were going to put it in, you didn't have to do the question and answer thing if you signed your thing with whatever you know your particular bank, if your bank supported that. Now most do, there's still a few that don't. So if somebody's sending me money to my bank, for instance, it just automatically goes in. They And they're not prompted to say, what's the security question? They just inform them this will be an automatic. And But it does give them a few hours to pull it back. So I kind of hate that, though. I mean, I, I agree with the person being able to pull it back because they actually do it. But could you imagine somebody sends you $150 and you're like, oh, man, that's beautiful. Thank you. Even call them up and say, hey, man, thanks. And you take the money out and spend it. And then you go into your bank and you go like minus 150. No, wait a minute. What's this? There's a charge for $35 for. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, what if you sold something for that? Right. And now they have the product and you thought you had the money and now you don't have either. <laughs> uh, the selling thing is a little bit different. Um, technically speaking, that that's a risk. So like, for instance, when I paid for those butter tarts in that method, uh, he had the automatic thing set up. It went through instantly. So he handed me the box of butter tarts and off I went. Now, had I been a jerk off, I could have done that. And that would have been uh, dishonest. It sure. would have also been illegal because I took the product. You're not going to take butter tarts back. <laughs> right. You know, to a farmer who, who basically his wife slaves over a hot stove six right. days a week <laughs> to make butter tarts to sell. I mean, only a jerk would do something like that, but apparently it does happen. And he admits you that. have square in the uh, Canada. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, mm -hmm. small businesses absolutely love it. They yeah, don't have to fantastic. go. Yeah. Our, our system here, we have a few different providers. Some of them are the same as some of yours and some of them aren't, um, that the provide the POS. I mean, um, oh, yeah. but the thing about square, of course, is that it's much easier. You can simply sign up, verify your business, uh, have the stuff delivered to your door and slap it on the table. Uh, you go with the other POS systems, they come in and say, yeah, well, you can use this one and this is the advantage and here's the billions yeah. of dollars you're going to have to pay to use the system. If it gets <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and then the, the things are usually this freaking big, where squares is like this. Oops, I can't even. They're facing <laughs> camera. They're like tiny little things, right? I always like they always look nice and clean and white, and you know. <laughs> and they work well, really well when they when they first started doing it, though they were kind of hit and miss. But uh, no, they work perfectly fine now. Good. Well. Uh, one thing I just want to uh, say, and then we'll move on to the next thing, is I remember the first time I paid for something with my watch when Tap and Pay was first really uh, coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, they came up, and I went, and they looked at me like, are you going to pay? I was like, I just did. They're like, you just put your watch <laughs> on that thing. I was like, look yeah. at your thing. It says, you paid with your watch? I'm like, yeah, I paid with my watch. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know what i remember I you loved telling it. It me that fantastic. Story. yeah i remember you telling me that story and i remember thinking oh yeah i finally got my watch now and i can do tap to pay i, I was like it's like i can't wait to see their face right i go into the store get the thing all ready because you know back then you had to do all this and yeah get it all ready and then you sit there and you're like it's not reaching <laughs> oh there we go oh it was so easy <laughs> But whatever, it's still convenient now. Now it's a lot easier. Usually these things are like right up at risk level. The NFC anyway. works way better now than it did. Then. Oh yeah, I mean, like honestly, I I I literally just have to turn my wrist, make sure it's on, or tap it because I'd have to hold it this way and it goes off because that's how I have yeah. the setting. So I would just hold it this way, tap it, and walk by. I mean, it, it half a second and it's on. But yeah. I remember I went into the store, and it, again, I think this was maybe a couple of weeks after you were telling me about that, if that even. Uh, and I went into the store and I thought I was going to get the same kind of reaction. Like what? I tapped and she goes, thank you very much. And I said, you didn't see I paid with my watch. She goes, I've seen that before. <laughs> You're like, oh it's man. Canada, man. People have been doing that already for, uh, uh at least a year with Apple watches at that point. By the time you tapped to pay Apple watches, we're doing their Apple pay thing for a buddy. Yeah. Year, yeah. Yeah. At that point. So it, that was very common. And, and, and apples are just as popular in Canada as, as they are in the U.S. It's absurd, yeah. but it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So good times, good times. That was a, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, good. That, that came out, but um. So I think just a little PSA. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but look, people, when you go to McDonald's or you go to the airport or bus station or wherever you're going. Don't plug your USB cable in the wall to charge. <laughs> okay. And then this Take is this your charger to... block if you need to, and then plug it in a receptacle and then charge your phone or carry your own external battery source. Because uh, what do they call it? Juice jacking hey. is a thing. And some of those USB ports, you don't know what's on the other side of that wall that's not only giving you power but also taking your data. So right, just a word yeah. of caution. Don't, don't use. I no, no, I, listen, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't do it anyways, but the fact of the matter is this is not something that most people would be worried about today, as opposed to when you had like a phone with ice cream sandwich on it uh, or, or something like that. Right. Um, or, or one of those, now, for those of you who don't know, that's an operating system, not that you actually had ice cream sandwich on your phone. Okay. Well, I almost did today. I, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I love me some ice cream sandwich, man. Oh, uh, boy. Okay. Uh, anyways, yeah, no, it, it's it's just, it's not something that's, it's, it's kind of like how when some viruses come out and everyone's, oh, you got to make sure you get these updates and this is going to affect this and, the, and, you, and you get the clickbait articles that say, if you don't do this now, you're at high risk. You're at high risk of what? 90% of the time, by the time they print that article, it's already been patched. Most of the time, that information comes out after it's patched. And most of the time, those vulnerabilities are found out uh, by people who are paid huge amounts of money to look for vulnerabilities from Apple, from Google, mm -hmm. from uh, yeah. uh, Microsoft, Linux. There's people looking for vulnerabilities in freaking Unix. Yeah. <laughs> and if you say, oh, well, Unix doesn't have any vulnerabilities. Really? Have you ever it, it, used a Mac? 
Yeah, it's probably not as prevalent for sure, but it's still something. No, that, yeah. it, could, it could be something that's not necessarily taking your data, right. but maybe it's depositing a malware package or uh, or something. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it's yeah, not that it's yeah, not that hard. But does not do the bot. The bottom line is 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 is, is that uh, again we go back to use your head, uh, be secure and stuff. And and you know here's the thing: a lot of people say, "Well, I want to update every time there's an update. It's, I'm told that it's going to break something." It was security updates on your phone and your computer are ridiculously necessary. It's not just vulnerabilities. They're also fixing bugs that could actually lead to do other problems. Yes. And also speed along those vulnerabilities. So, yeah, update. Yeah. If, if the updates available. Can it cause problems? Yes, they do sometimes. That's why in our company, there's some security patches. Not security. I shouldn't say security because we publish all security patches. But... We control Windows updates with our with our software, and anything right. that's not a security patch, we'll hold it for thirty days and then we'll push it out. Because how many times yeah, does Microsoft sense. recall yeah. uh, an update? Because oh, sorry, we just deleted all your data. We better recall that update real quick. And fix I can it. I can tell you of two or three. So, yeah, every quarter. Uh, every quarter. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, they've they've had a few yeah. over the years. Hundred <laughs> percent. Install the security patch and then fix whatever it breaks because this is yeah not yeah. And you know what? Here's here's a, here's a bit of a tip. It's, this works as, whether you're talking about Windows or or your Samsung or Google or OnePlus phone or whatever. I, I maybe with Apple. I probably for sure with but, Apple. But <laughs> but here's the thing. I know people say, "Oh, we'll restart it." Believe it or not, most issues after an update are not caused from a completely bad write, but from either an application or something that talks to the application mm -hmm. that did not register properly. Restarting it is an automatic registering when it starts. That yeah. works completely differently on Windows than it does on Android, completely different on Android than it does on iOS. But they all have the exact same issue. And it's the same reason if you get an update on your smart TV. And you're like, I can't get this to work properly. Why isn't the voice assistant coming up? Why isn't this? Turn your TV off. Wait a few seconds. Turn it back on. That doesn't work. Turn it off. Unplug it. Wait a few seconds. Well, 15. Plug it back in. Turn it back on. And it should fix the problem. 99% of the time, at least, that's what you want to do. Restart. Yeah, most of the time, it's the app developers not keeping up with the OS developers. Yeah. Yeah. OS developers are doing their due diligence and I appreciate that. But app developers don't or software in general, like Windows and all yeah, that. They just don't yeah. keep up with the security. That's why there's still people we had a client using uh, .NET 3.5. .NET 3.5 hasn't been a thing forever. They're not even updating it anymore. It's it's a discontinued product. So really? why are you developing with it? It's ridiculous. But I 100% agree. My my TV updated the other night broke my Philips Hue Sync app. I had to. Is that what it. happened to mine? It might be. I had to resync it with my um, my hub downstairs. Oh no, that's not what happened to mine. Yours actually, yeah. But yeah. it's you know, I, it was no big deal. You know, it took me you know twenty minutes. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I do have to. I do have to do my <laughs> my my Hue Sync app again because I don't know what happened. I think they updated their app as mm -hmm. well, and for some reason. Uh, it's like, oh, well, uh, do you have a, uh, a, a sync box? I'm like, what? yeah, it's working. It, 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 I can tell it what to do right now. So I open the, I, uh, uh, sorry, I, I asked Google to change the lights. It works problem. You know, I, I tell it to, you know, whatever, you know, change the light color, whatever. No problem. It syncs up and does the sync properly. No problem. <laughs> Well, what's what the heck's going on? I can't change any of my lights. I can't work the Hue app, nothing. Uh, so I, I get my second phone. Uh, and I'm like, oh, it looks like it's going to go in. Oh, no, it wants me to sign in. It has no idea who I am. I, 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 I it didn't save any my yeah. sign in yet. I'm like, I don't remember what it is. So now <laughs> what? I got to start from scratch and then redo it completely. I'm not doing that. So I, and you know, when you re-register this, how the pain in the butt, 
you gotta press oh, yeah. the button a certain way, and then you gotta sit back and you gotta hold mine's the phone downstairs. So close to it. I'm running up and down the You have to hold the phone so close to it that you gotta hold your arm up like this until it finally says, Yeah, it's done it. Yeah. And you gotta stare at the phone too, because if you don't stare at the phone, you won't know that it's done. Right. I don't know why they came up with such a why do you have to have the phone within an inch? It makes no sense to me. Yeah, you know, so please come out with a new one. <laughs> Make it less expensive. Uh, you know, Good screw that. Better. You just just build the app into everyone's TVs, and I'll get had a new TV one. Yeah, day. this this but, app on this TV works fantastic. Oh, it's got to be much better than that. Oh, and it doesn't matter yeah. what you plug into the TV. You got you got you're golden. You're golden. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I but you remember, I told you you're talking about your your hue sync issues with your lights. Remember, I told you I was having the same yeah. issue where things weren't responding. That's right. Suddenly, it's all working now. I haven't well, that, had any more issues. Oh, that's excellent. That's, that's great. Um, <laughs> oh, they did something. They updated something that's like, oh, we should fix it. Oh, honestly, it probably it probably does work much better, but it's just it's like I'd make this discovery, and I'm like, okay, well, if I start messing with this now, I won't have any lights when we start the podcast. <laughs> so I was <laughs> like, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. All right. <laughs> uh, and I know you can't see these blue lights going on right now, but I was kind of in a rush changing from uh, my previous kind of studio area over bed Location. where the drums and the guitars and bass are and everything but i've moved this into my room uh as i do this better i'm eventually going to have the tv as a backdrop behind me rather than me looking at this giant tv over here and i'll be able to have the camera right in front of me all the time and it'll just look more natural and better but anywho having said that Let's move on to something else before. What's next, Lion? One person might be wanting. I, you know what? I, I, I'm not sure because I can't see this very well. I'll look. I'll, I'll put. I'll put my old man face on, and I'll look at the phone instead. So, what is this article about? Google still recommends glue for your pizza. What? You sent that to me, and I'm, I didn't have a chance oh, to read. I was super busy oh, today, but I was like, "What? Well, you is, know what? what yeah, sure. Let's 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 talk comical." Um, it's, you know, it's funny. I can't seem to find it. Uh, in, in, we're looking in the same, in the same section, by the way, we make this list and we share it. Um, how far it's down got a big green, green computer on it or big green smiley face. Oh yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Oh, right. The verge. Thank <laughs> you. The verge. Okay. Oh wait, I have to put these back on. I forgot. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was it? Okay. It was about uh, um, querying how much glue to add to pizza. And apparently, I, I've never heard of this before, but apparently this was a thing. And 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 somebody did this, and what they ended up with was getting uh, the results back where, uh, what did it say? It's it, this is, It says AI overview, so I don't know which ai this actually is i don't know this is gemini <laughs> okay, because it doesn't look like it in there if you look at it you can see that it says yeah. according to a may 2024 <laughs> article in business insider google's ai search results suggested adding an eighth of a cup or two <laughs> tablespoons of white non-toxic glue to pizza sauce to, pre <laughs> to, to prevent cheese from sliding off <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the article's off uh, i gotta get this name right katie notopolis said the glue didn't significantly change the sauce's <laughs> consistency <laughs> she and, did the it? Pizza, and the pizza turned out an attractive orange color Oh, I should have read this before. Uh, that yeah, I didn't have time at work, but man, that is comical. I mean, come on, people. I mean, really? Oh my god. Yeah, gosh. no, that's not a thing. And so, so basically, uh, beyond that, I of course had to have my little bit of curiosity. I'm like, are you kidding me? This has got to be fake. So of course, I I went in in and I I uh, uh, asked Gemini myself. Oh Lord, did I not save it? Yes, I did. No, that's not it. I I swear I saved it. I don't know what happened to it. You sent it to me in a text, so it's probably in your text message. Oh, I probably didn't actually save it. You're right. Okay, so uh, yeah, but how how far down is that? <laughs> oh boy. Um, sorry. Uh, don't want any dead air here. So it says. Um, 
your your Gemini says, do not add glue to pizza. It's not safe to consume. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the wrong device. I can't find the text. Yeah, uh, at least oh, you right. got the Gemini. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering why this said October. I'm like, wait a <laughs> do minute. Do not add, add glue. Excuse this October. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do, do not add glue. Yeah, so but I asked Gemini, and it was right away. Like, that was the only answer it gave me. That, that is not safe to consume. Do not do that. And and that's the answer you expect to get. So I don't know that it's technically fake. I think they just kind of skewed the results to get an interesting article that would sound funny and, and and move it along. I mean, shame on you, Verge. You can fact check yourself, fact check, you know, uh, Gemini, fact check, chat DP, GPT, and you can ask those to fact check themselves. There's no way. So, no. I'm surprised uh, Gemini didn't say, you idiot, put the phone down. And go talk to your mommy or something because you're you're being an idiot right now. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Yeah, man? I think I think that's something they should think about build, building into it. But I tell you what would be able to do something like that in the future, and probably not that long of a future from now, is and we discussed this uh possibly the last time about the um chat GPT four O. Oh, not zero. <laughs> not zero uh the voice uh uh, mode one uh, with conversation and the update that it was always on well as i had mentioned before i assumed because i didn't have enough detailed information that that would mean that it uh because it was already technically on if you opened it it stayed open unless you Mm -hmm. physically closed it from the notification or swiped it away however the update did hit my phone and next time i turned it on i actually got a toast message telling me that it was going to stay active and whether i wanted to get notified of that every time or just let it be active so i thought okay i'll let it be active and i just remember it and i tested it out walking around the mall and i'll tell you two things about it a it works remarkably well it can hear you extremely easily and you can have a conversation with this thing while you're walking around in a busy mall with hundreds of other people. B, if you don't start talking quickly, when you open it, it will respond, in my case, in full Mandarin. What? Uh, Oh, sorry, no, it wasn't Mandarin. That happened later. It was actually uh, Tagalog, uh, the Filipino language. And I was like, wait a minute, what am I hearing? I put the phone up to my ear and it was, and I please, I'm not trying to be insulting. Because I don't speak Tagalog, but it was like that's what it sounds kind of like when you don't speak the language. And I'm like, what is it doing? I said that sounds like Tagalog. <laughs> and I turned around, and there was a family of a few people walking by. Well, I don't know that they were a family, but some few people walking by, and they were speaking Tagalog, and 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 or they were Filipinos, obviously. Uh, and, and I was like, wow. So I just said to it, and again, you don't have to prompt it. It's always on. So I I, I just basically said to it, um, I don't really speak that language. Can you say it to me in German instead? <laughs> because it was answering whatever they were saying. And you don't yeah. have to ask you questions. You can just basically yeah. talk, and it will respond. So if you're the AI, for instance, and I, and I would just say, you know, I just think it's a really beautiful day right now it, it, it reminds me of people though when i had Google <laughs> but, Glass. But you, you see you did respond that's exactly what it would do except it wouldn't have said that but it might oh I, so, yeah I, it works great okay but let me, wait, I, 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 I didn't realize you want me to pretend to be google <laughs> yeah, no no not google not the chat gpt thing or chat gpt but but, but but really but but really quick, i said there were two points the other the other one was that unfortunately it can hear people quieter than you 10 feet away so yeah it's not that good outside you i'm just making the point that you can if you if you feel like you need to but if you're at home or or something like that, right, or at work or whatever, and you just in your in your own office or whatever, it works fantastically. So it, it's a futurist stuff, and and when when it can do a little bit more, it's going to be great. Like once they get to the point where you know you can get, it's not going to happen with an Android phone ever. 
uh, in its full capacity because it's never going to be given the, the ability to uh, turn on your lights via whatever security message go through your phone in order to allow it right. to do that. It's never going to be able to open up your bank app, you know, stuff like that. Whereas, of course, Gemini will be able to do all that stuff inevitably. Right. Um, but it's it's a good future. And I like the fact that it's definitely more conversational than Gemini. But Gemini still feels like a very natural conversation. So it's on its way. Yeah. Well, the, your point about hearing people and, and always listening reminds me of when I had my Google Glass. Oh, and, yeah. Um, you know, you could say, hey, Glass, take a picture. Da, 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 right. So you could talk to it. I had this one guy one time <laughs> walk by. He saw I had it. He said, hey, Glass, self destruct. <laughs> <laughs> he was oh, trying no. to tell my Google glasses to self-destruct. I just busted out laughing. I said, it's not the way it works, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, not, 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 not quite, right? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that's hilarious. Oh, boy. But, well, uh, so well, of course, you're not, you're not, as, as it would know, it, you, you would consider it a glass hole. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Proud. I was a proud, glass proud hole. glass hole. Yeah, I remember. Proud I missed. Hole. I missed all those pictures you used to send uh, or post on Google Plus. The but only anyway. thing, the only thing is, sometimes when I would wink to take pictures, sometimes people <laughs> look at me like, "Why did you just wink at me?" I'm like, "Oh, sorry, not you." <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> There's some awkward winks going on. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> wink to take a picture I said, hey, yeah. oh no not you sorry sorry not you're not you it it was cool tech i mean i i i was <laughs> part of the first ten thousand people to ever have one and that was kind of cool to be part of that original like beta alpha test you know that was that was pretty exciting. yeah yeah and and you know to, to be part of something that would be such a huge success and the entire world was going to inevitably have a, oh right it was google <laughs> <laughs> it's google they buried it i forgot yeah. i sold my glass at just the nick of time to get it i think i ended up getting like 800 bucks for them and they were 1500 dollars. that was i i i absolutely hate you why didn't you sell it to me i had the money at the time oh i don't know time i said you make it <laughs> you never even offered it i would have killed for that thing but i, even I, I stopped it. wearing them because they stopped Look. developing and things weren't working and and they were gonna yeah. you know I heard rumors about him shutting it down, and and then I ended up selling it for like a hundred bucks. And, and I I think I honestly I don't really know why they did it. I think they were just doing one of their stupid shift people from this department to that department, but still don't let them talk to each other things that yeah. they do once every three or four years. It's ridiculous. But that you know what? That's another discussion entirely. For we sure. don't have time to talk about Google's graveyard today. No, no. But uh, but one thing I wanted to close out on to in um, Android's favor, the last one was an Apple thing that said Apple's better, but maybe it's not, um, is <laughs> Android will now have three years longer updates than iOS. Wait, wait. iOS came out and said five years is all they'll do on security updates from now on. Well, that's two Android more is eight. Eight. No, seven, seven. I thought it was eight. It's it's seven. It's, it's guaranteed seven across the board. But here's the thing. That's not all of Android. That's only Samsung and 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 and, uh, and Pixel. Well, for me, uh, that's all of Android. <laughs> but I get here. Here's here's where I can guarantee you something. I could imagine OnePlus, maybe their next phone or the one after, going. You know what? I think we'll do it too. But. Maybe they won't. Uh, OnePlus doesn't have the greatest for their uh, updates, but they're not the worst either, right? But they might they might throw in five. And for most people, you're not going to keep it that long anyways, unless you are an iPhone user. They're really the only people I, I, I've ever met that use the same phone for seven years. I've never yeah. seen that with anybody else. But um, yeah, no, Samsung and, and Google are both and Google did it first, Samsung jumped right on board. And I think they were talking to each other about it. It's not like Google did it. Samsung's like, yeah, we're going to match them. Yeah, uh, but they, they, they talked to each other about it. Um, but seven years is also the full OS updates. That's the key to it. 
So yeah. it's not just security updates, but you're not guaranteed any security dates, security dates. <laughs> no dates for you. No security updates. <laughs> no security updates. You're not guaranteed past that seven years. That said, that doesn't mean you won't. But look, remember there's when, some people remember when Google phones. guaranteed only two years of updates and, yeah. and then they would give a phone three. And I think one phone they even gave four. Uh, which one was it? Was that wasn't the five? Was it? I don't remember. Pixel two or Pixel three? I never had one long enough that even remember. mattered to me, so I I don't know. Oh, well, I, yeah, really, I, I, I had I a our client had one of um one of their employees was having an issue getting their email working on their phone, and right. he had an S twenty, and um another client of ours that just got an S twenty four, because his medical apps would no longer work on his. Note 10. You heard me right. That's not that old. A Note 10? Yeah, it's very old. It's, we're in 20s now. Yeah, but they, they skipped 10. Remember? They, they, maybe it's an 8. Maybe it's a Note 8. It was it no was 11 8, or whatever. 12. Look, this thing was so old. I It, it was ancient. Is that before it, or after? The, at least that, five or six years. Is that before or after the explosive uh, note? I don't remember. I don't remember which one the explosive. I think that was Note 10, actually. So there are some people that <laughs> use it long enough to take advantage of that. So that could be a selling point, honestly. Um, I would never use it. Yeah. Long. Matter of fact, this S23 is the longest I've ever had a phone in the last seven, eight years. Hey, hey maybe longer. I, I got the Pixel 7 Pro right here. Right. It's not my main phone, though. My S uh, S8. Right. My S8. <laughs> Now that would be an old phone. My yeah. Galaxy S5. Yeah, I've got that one. Yeah. Uh by the way, the Galaxy S5 was one of the best looking phones, despite the fact that it was like 99% plastic. It was it was one of the best looking phones of its day, honestly. I think it was yeah. the only phone that I thought looked as good as an HTC. Is so HTC if phone. you're a user that uses a phone for five years, take a look at Android because at five years, no more yeah. Apple updates. Yeah. So. Wow. Uh, no, no, hang on. That's guaranteed. They didn't say they wouldn't because they, they've gone so far. I believe they said that that's their guarantee. Uh, but in all fairness, they're not going to go seven. <laughs> <laughs> because it's more complicated now, right? And, yeah. and, and they don't want to commit to that. Whereas Google and Samsung are like, we, we love committing to it because we know we're going to sell another phone almost every year to most people <laughs> because that's just, that's that's the nature of an android user we like to get new phones uh, well psh, look at the lines at apple store and a new apple phone comes out yeah but it's not always every single person getting a new phone it's the ones who didn't get it last year or the year before or even the year before that i know almost everybody knows an iphone user two of them have last year's phone only one of them is so already committed to buying this year's phone. Um, yeah. All the rest of them, 14, 13, and even uh, 12. I know somebody with, with an iPhone 8, and they're still saying, oh, I love it. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. If you say so. Yeah. iPhone yeah, 8. Exactly. You know how old an iPhone 8 is? They don't get updates. They haven't had updates for years. That's a seven-year-old <laughs> phone. Sounds like an iPod to me. No, it was. You say that. To me, it's, it's pretty much would be just an iPod. You're not getting updates right. anymore. It's an iPod right. that you're lucky still makes phone calls. Anyways, with that said, we do have to roll along. So please remember to like, subscribe, and uh, also there's Hit a that bell little icon. icon. Is it, it looks like a bell. Is that what it is? Ding, ding, Hit ding. that. Be notified of the new content. You're especially going to want to make sure you do that for next week because you're going to want to know when we get that one out there. And also, uh, during uh, the first week of July, our can dependent celebration shows. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. If we can get a decent amount of people subscribing here, we might decide to do some live shows and actually talk to people. So get in there. Let us know. Share this. Like, subscribe, yeah. hit the bell. Ding, ding. So, Let's well, look, week. I'm Robert from the U.S. And... I'm still Lionel, and I'm still in Toronto. <laughs> we'll catch you next episode. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> Bye.